Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to derive the canonical ensemble partition function for translational motion in three dimensions. Recall that the energy of translational motion in three dimensions has the following form. That we have h squared divided by 8 times m, and then this is multiplied by nx squared over l sub x squared plus n sub y squared over l sub y squared plus n sub z squared divided by l sub z squared. And if you check out the links, which you'll see here, you can see how we derive that expression. Furthermore, as a subtle point, the various ends, so we'll just write it as n sub x, y, or z, go from 1 through the positive integers. Important subtle point here is that ends can never be equal to 0. The lowest energy state for translation would be n sub x, n sub y, n sub b equal to 1. Next, to simplify our derivation, we're going to assume that we're dealing with a cubic region. So therefore, we are going to let L sub x be equal to L sub y equal to L sub z, which is just going to be equal to L. And then we're going to rewrite our expression for the energy in terms of simply this value L. This gives us that the energy is equal to h squared. h is going to be Planck's constant. 8 times m. m is the mass of the particle. And then our expression inside the brackets is going to be n sub x squared divided by l squared plus n sub y squared divided by l squared plus n sub z squared divided by l squared. And we notice that now we're able to factor out 1 over L squared, which gives us the following expression for the energy, which is going to be H squared over 8ML squared times N sub X squared plus N sub Y squared plus N sub Z squared. Next, we notice that the volume of the region under consideration is L sub x times L sub y times L sub z. It gives us the total volume of the region. But we've made the substitution that each of the L sub x, L sub y, L sub z is equal to L. So that tells us now that the volume of the region involved is going to be L cubed. And we're doing this so that we can get an expression, instead of in terms of the size of the box, we simply want the total area. Now, based upon this, we can take the cube root of each side, and we see that the cube root of V is equal to L. Not very surprising. And once we have that, we can write an expression for L squared. This gives us that L squared is equal to the volume to the two-thirds power, which looks a little inconvenient currently, but will be helpful later on in our derivation. So we're going to substitute L squared with this V to the two-thirds power. After these manipulations, it gives us that the energy of translational motion is going to be H squared over 8 times m, times the volume to the two-thirds power, times the quantity n sub x squared plus n sub y squared plus n sub z squared. Now we can apply the definition of the canonical ensemble partition function, and we take the sum starting at 
zero, and then going up to infinity. Now we're going to start at one because uh, it's not defined at the n is equal to zero, but we have the, the various n sub x, y, or z starting at one. For the expression, we have e to the minus, and then we have the energy, and divided by kT. Now we're going to make a somewhat complicated substitution. Uh, to make it easier to write an expression for this e to the minus e over kT, being that e is such a complicated expression, so we're going to define a new variable a, which is going to be equal to h squared divided by 8m v to the two-thirds power times k times t. And the reason for doing this is now we're going to be able to write e to the minus e divided by kt as e to the minus a times n squared, n sub x squared plus n sub y squared plus n sub z squared, which we'll show right now. This transforms our expression for the canonical ensemble partition function into this sum over e to the minus a times nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared, which admittedly may look more complicated than the expression that we started with. But we'll see in a second, particularly since we're now we're having to deal with sums over three different indices, that having it transformed into this particular type of an expression will make the next step that much easier. Now we use the fact that when we have exponents that are added together, we can write this as a series of products. So we're able to break this single exponential into the product of three different exponentials. And it's key to see that this exponential depends only on nx, this exponential depends only on ny, and this exponential only depends upon nz. And we'll be able to make an even further simplification in just a second. Our expression here is a summation over three different indices, n sub x, n sub y, and n sub z. But it's important to see that there's no great significance to these different indices. They're dummy indices. We could have called them anything we want. Because no matter whether we have n sub x, n sub y, or n sub z, they're all going from 1 to infinity. So therefore, it suggests that we can replace n sub x, n sub y, and n sub z with a single variable n. So we were able to write the translational partition function as the repeated product of this type of expression. So this expression would just be one of these summations, for example, just n sub x. So since we're doing it three times, we simply do the summation and raise it to the third power. The advantage of doing this is now we reduce the number of indices from three to one. And now we have a nice expression for the uh, translational partition function. Even further, it suggests that now uh, we can simplify by taking the cube roots of each side, and I now have an expression for the cube root of the translational partition function, which will write as q trans to the one-third power, which is going to be equal to the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of e to the minus a n squared. Now we are going to apply a technique that we have used in a previous video, and you can look here to see the link to that video, in that we're going to approximate the sum as an integral. And the integral that we're going to approximate it is, now an integral instead of being from 1 to infinity, is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity, because that's going to be a closed form integral that we uh, are familiar with. So now we have e to the minus a n squared dn. 
we need to do a, another substitution, and now we're going to define a new variable, x, which is equal to a times n squared. And we notice that if we do this, we get that n squared is equal to x divided by a. And more specifically, we get that n is equal to the square root of x divided by the square root of a. We can also write this equivalently as x to the one-half power divided by the square root of a. And the reason why we want to do that is that for our substitution, we need to know the value of dn. So we have the differential of n. And now we apply the rules for exponents. So we have x to a power is equal to 1 over 2. We have a square root of a in the denominator. And then we reduce the exponent of x by 1. So that gives us x to the minus 1 half. And then we can write this perhaps even more simply as 1 over 2 times the square root of a times the square root of x. So this gives us a value for dn. Having made the x substitution, we are now able to recast this particular integral as the integral from 0 to infinity. We have our 1 over the 2 times the square root of a as a coefficient. And then our integral becomes e to the minus x divided by the square root of x dx, which I had omitted up here, which I should, very important to put here, so it's dx. So now we've transformed this particular integral into an integral that we expect that we'll be able to solve. And this particular function inside the, just the integral itself, is equal to the gamma function. It's the gamma function for the case of one half. I'll show why that's so in the next slide. Here in light blue, we have the gamma function. So it's an integral, divided as an integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x times x to the n minus one. So here's where the n dependence comes into the integral. And since we have x square root in the denominator, this is equivalent to the x to the minus one half power. So the way that we get one half here is if we have one half minus one is equal to minus one half. So the integral we have here is equal to the gamma function of one half. And in this particular case, the value of the gamma function is simply going to be the square root of pi. Since the integral is equal to square root of pi. Now we know that the cube root of the translational partition function is equal to the square root of pi divided by 2 times the square root of a. So rewriting what we have already, we have that the cube root of the translational partition function is the square root of pi divided by 2 times the square root of a. So what we want to do now is back substitute our value for uh, a, take the square root of it, and notice that since it's the denominator, we're just simply going to take the reciprocal. We're going to flip it. Let me write it down. So we have times 
the square root of 8 times m times the volume to the two-thirds power times kt divided by the square root of h Planck's constant square. We can do some further simplifications by noticing that the square root of pi times the square root of here is simply equal to the square root of the whole thing together. We can use the fact that we can factor out a 4 underneath the square root sign. The square root of 4 is 2, so that will cancel the 2 here and leave a 2 underneath the square root sign. So that gives us that we have the square root of 2 times m times pi times the volume to the 2 thirds power times kt all underneath the square root sign divided by the square root of Planck's constant squared. Notice that considering the volume uh, is v to the two-thirds power, if we take the square root of that, that multiplies the exponent by one-half, so that we can pull out a volume to the one-third power out of the square root. So let's just do that for a second here, even though that doesn't seem like it's going to help a lot. So we have 2 times m times pi times k times t, and then we have the volume to the one-third power outside of the square root sign. And then we have the square root of a squared here. For our final step, finally there, um, since we've come up with an expression for the cube root of the partition function, to get the actual partition function, we cube each side. So now we're going to raise each of these to the third, multiply by the third power, and we're going to use the fact that the square root can be thought of as the one-half power. So if we take a square root and then cube it, we get the three-halves power. So everything underneath the square root signs, we can write as an expression 2 times m times pi times k times t divided by 8 squared all to the 3 halves power. And then if we cube, the cube root of the volume, we simply get the volume. So this gives us an expression for the translational partition function. in three dimensions. So we have 2 times the mass times pi times the uh, Boltzmann constant k times the temperature t divided by uh, Planck's constant squared all to the 3 halves power times the volume. And that is our canonical ensemble partition function for translation in three dimensions. I thank you very, very much for your attention. As always, have a good one.